All right, guys, how to set your vapor honing machine up for wet solder blasting. So what makes wet solder blasting so beneficial? All I gotta say is, dude, it's amazing. Yeah. Because when you're using soda as your abrasive, the cleaning process is so much easier. As in like when uh, you finish blasting or more like af after you finish wet blasting, um, soda actually is water soluble. So once you just rinse it off, all that soda that is stuck in any cracks or any crannies, any tunnels, whatever, um, it gets rinsed off like nothing. Yeah, it literally just disappears. It's a little bit more aggressive than just regular parts washing, but what it really could do is actually hit all that grease and grime and just clean it all up. It ain't gonna have that shine like glass bead does, but you will have a clean part. And the, the clean part process of it is super easy. And like I was saying, dude, it's amazing. You're 100% right. It's amazing. Because it, like Tua was saying, if you take a hydro blast, you're just using water. Mm -hmm. And there's only so much you can do with just water because it doesn't have any form of aggregate. Mm -hmm. But it, soda is not as aggressive as glass bead because, I mean, it itself as an abrasive is much softer. Mm -hmm. So you're blasting with a very soft water soluble abrasive. So you're actually able to degrease apart faster than you would in a hydro blast because you have that aggregate, but you can take that part, wash it off like Tua was saying, and when you're done, you're left with a perfectly clean part that has no media in it. Whereas with, if you're blasting a glass bead, aluminum oxide, any sort of non-water soluble abrasive, you always have that little bit of concern that did I really get all that abrasive out? So you're 100% right. And whenever I'm blasting with glass bead or aluminum oxide, dude, there's never a time where I'm like, yeah, that's perfect. Uh, let me go ahead and dry that off. Dude, yeah. I always keep on rinsing it and rinsing it. Exactly. And like, if not that, dunk it in the water. Like, dunk it, like, how many times afterwards? Like, 10 times? Yep. But at the end of the day, you're like, let me do it one more time. Yeah. yeah. Even after you dry it, you're like, did I really get that clean? <laughs> yeah. So, that's one major benefit of soda. But yeah. So how do we set up for wet soda blasting then? The biggest suggestion that we have if you guys are trying to set up a machine for wet soda blasting is buy a closed loop machine. We know it's a little bit more expensive, but the benefit of having a closed loop machine when you're working with soda is you have to super saturate the water. Meaning if the machine actually takes 25 pounds of media, so you have an 800 FL, it takes 25 pounds of media, you actually might have to put in 50 pounds of soda because you have to reach that point to where the water has enough soda in it that it's actually not um, just dispersing whenever you put more in it. And then you actually use your, your media density cup to determine how much soda you have in your cabinet. Now, when you have a closed loop machine, this is actually going to allow you to keep that solubility rate that it's at to the same level. Because you know, if you have an open loop machine, you're constantly exchanging water, meaning you're gonna have to add more and more soda to your cabinet. So if you guys have a closed loop machine, it is definitely gonna help you maintain those uh, water to abrasive ratios that you have inside of your machine. With wet soda blasting, it doesn't necessarily have to be in a VH800 fully loaded. It could be in the new VH700, or if not that, on the micro. I mean, it, it works on any kind of machine, basically. Absolutely. As long as it's set up for closed loop, you're all set for this and you'll get great results. And it's not saying that it can't be done in an open loop system, we just advise that it's done in a closed loop system. Again, that way you're not having to constantly add media to it because even with a closed loop machine, as your water evaporates because that soda is literally being held into it and you have to add water back into it, you're also gonna have to continue to add soda. Um, that is one other thing that I want to mention about wet soda blasting is that anywhere water gets on your cabinet, soda gets. Somebody, not naming names here, but somebody flooded our showroom <laughs> <laughs> and got soda everywhere. everywhere. I so, sure did. <laughs> dude, I came in the next, I was like, oh no. I was like, this is gonna take forever. Luckily we have a four sweeper. Yeah, we So did. you got you got saved on that regard. But Yeah, hey, I said I was gonna clean it, but you know. So again, just take into consideration that this is a uh it's not necessarily messier, it's just something that you're gonna have to look out more for if you guys are trying to do this in a clean room or anything of that nature. Just uh, pay attention to where you're getting your water because soda will follow. Mm -hmm. It happened to me, trust me. I did that for two weeks straight and 
dude. Oh, I left a, the whole trail like that. It was back, a soda bomb Niagara in the pool. showroom, dude. It was bad. <laughs> but if you guys would have been here, you guys would see it. It's like this thick. I mean, like, I mean, it's just like this oh, you wide. Had a path. But then I had a whole path, <laughs> like uh, Wizard of Oz. Instead of the gold trail, we had that <laughs> yeah, white trail. So, follow the soda path. <laughs> so the way that you set up wet soda blasting, like we said earlier, is you literally just set it up like you would any other vapor honing machine but you have to super saturate it. So you have to add it to that point in your machine to where you have enough um, that you're actually reaching the, the correct amount in your measurements. We do have a lot of people that use soda blasting. Um, it can even depend on the temperature of water. It's a little finicky. But if you guys want to call in, our salespeople can tell you exactly how much soda you guys are going to need in your machine. That number is 828-202-5563. Um, and again, they will help you set up your configurations that you need to actually do the size of parts that you're looking for and also tell you whether soda is gonna be a viable option for you because for some stuff it won't work. So if you guys are trying to remove something like anodizing, soda's probably not gonna be your answer. You're definitely gonna to have to use a harder abrasive like aluminum oxide. But again, if you guys are just trying to degrease parts and get them back to where you can work on them, soda is one of the best options out there. If you're trying to use dry soda to, do, to degrease parts and you have, let's say you have a cylinder head that's got a lot of grease on the outside for some reason, whenever you're blasting that with, with dry soda, all of that grease is getting in the media and because of the way that most dry blasters work, it can't recirculate. Mm -hmm. And also, whenever that soda hits the part, it actually explodes. Mm -hmm. So there's, it's, it's pretty much unusable after one use, no matter how clean your part is when you're using it. Um, with wet soda blasting, that's not the case because the water also helps to degrease your parts and it, it causes that media to actually last longer because when it hits the surface, it's not exploding like it would with dry blasting. So you can use the same soda for a while. It's just you have to add little bits to it as you're blasting. It's, like I said, it's not like glass bead where you set it up, you run it every day for a month and then you replace it because the media has broken down you do have to incrementally add to soda blasting as you're using it. We always pitch the Hydro Blast as the mechanic's best friend, and that's 100% true, mm -hmm. because you're not introducing anything that's gonna cause harm to the part um, when you're actually cleaning it. But soda blasting can be held in the same regard, and it's honestly a little bit faster. You just have to do that. You have to do your diligence after you clean the part to actually make sure you're getting that soda off of it. Um, it is faster than a Hydro Blast, and in comparison to a typical parts washer where you're having to use all kinds of chemicals. This is much safer for the environment. It's much safer for your personnel because there's no dust in a wet blasting system mm -hmm. and there's also not any sort of chemical waste like we were saying. Um, so this is very safe for your parts. It's very safe for your employees and it's also very safe for the, the end result and customer. I mean, their, their parts not going to be damaged. To set up your machine is basically literally super saturating the water and abrasive. And on top of that is Make sure you don't leave a trail <laughs> <laughs> and uh, closed loop system. That's the way how you can set up. Well, actually, that's the way how you should set up the, uh, for wet soda blasting. But yeah, anything else? No, if you guys have any questions or uh, anything that you would like to see soda blasted, leave it in the comments below. We'll make sure to read those and get that information back to you guys. But if you guys like this video, please give us a thumbs up and also consider subscribing and check out the other great content that we post every day because we cover a lot of educational stuff, machine specific stuff, as well as really cool stuff. Like uh, we actually partnered with Adam LZ. So make sure you guys check that video out because it's pretty rad to drift with him. Mm -hmm. But again, if you guys have any other questions, leave it in the comments below. And if you guys are ready to get the best performing equipment that money can buy you in your shop, business, working on your hobby, whatever it may be, you guys can reach us at 828-202-5563. We hope you like this video. Thank you all for watching. Have a great day and peace.